Good morning. Welcome to Changing Lives Ministries. I'm Pastor Michael Bradford. I got a word for you on today that I know is going to be a blessing for you. So if you're watching this, I want you to like it, share it, let your friends know what's going on, because I'm telling you right now, this word is going to bless you. I'll be back. Hey Amen. I want to show you something. Deuteronomy, somebody say six and five. Now, here's what it said. Now, I'm going to take my time because I want you to get it. Amen. Amen. And I'm not going to give you a whole lot of content, but I'm going to give you content that makes sense. Deuteronomy 6 and 5 says what? And thou shalt love the Lord thy God. You shall love the Lord your God with what? With all thine heart. Uh-huh. And with all thy soul. Now, watch this. The Bible says love God with all your what? Heart. With all your what? Soul. Read. And with all thy might. With all your strength. Somebody say strength. Okay, now the Bible says that thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all of your might. Might. Right? Y'all hear that? Amen. Now, this is interesting because when we read that word love in Deuteronomy, most times we translate the word love as deep feeling. That God has said that you should love me on a deep emotional level. That's what we interpret it as. And so when we say, God said, you should love me with all thy might, what we try to do is we try to love God in a more deep, feeling way. The issue with that is, in this context, the word love had nothing to do with deep, emotional feeling. But the interpretation of it, and I'm going to give it to you, it was a Hebrew word called ahava. This Hebrew word, actually expresses loyalty. That God said that to understand love, we have to understand, somebody say loyalty. And when we really begin to get that Deuteronomy 6 and 4, give me Deuteronomy 6 and 4. I want you to read that, 6 and 4. Read that. Hear, O Israel. Uh Uh-huh. The Lord our God Uh is one The Lord Lord our God, he is what? One Lord. He is God alone. Now watch this. Continue reading. And thou shalt love the Lord now watch thy this. God. He is, watch this. He is God alone, and thou shalt love this God alone with all thy heart, mind, strength, soul. Watch this. In other words, he said he is God alone, which means you love him and you're loyal to only him. Yes. This is why the distinction is he is God alone. So that I'm supposed to be, somebody say, faithful. Well, they come against faithful now. Yeah. A lot of people, they're not, they're not faithful. People don't like unfaithful people. I mean, people call you when you owe bills. They don't like you when you're unfaithful. When your name come up on the screen and they look at your name and they look at your credit history, they see how you've been paying, sometimes they got attitude talking to you. You talking about, wait a minute, this ain't your money, this ain't your company, but they just don't like that you are unfaithful. Faithful. And God said, I want you to love me, watch this, with loyalty. Tell your neighbor, be loyal. Be loyal. Now, this, this is interesting because we want deep emotional feeling absent most times of loyalty. It's getting quiet in here. When we become loyal, it changes the landscape. Because even though love is an intense feeling, God said, I want love in the form of behavior. I'm not looking for just how you feel about me. I want to know how you act toward me. You know, and a lot of times we love, but our behavior doesn't depict it. Jesus put it this way in the New Testament. He said, if you love me, what did he say you do? Keep my Listen to me, which means that God's definition of love plays out in how you act. Oh, yeah. Good. Now, this is very important because we sometimes act like because we love you, we can act any kind of way. Amen. And you're supposed to understand that we love you, which, which means we take for granted that you're supposed to be forgiving us when in reality, relationships are supposed to be reciprocal. Oh, So, let's talk about this order of relationship. Ephesians 5 and 22, husband and wives, buckle your seatbelt. Amen. Mm -mm 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 -mm. 
If you're happy and you know it, say amen. Say amen. amen. I didn't get to the clapping. I said, say amen. There's an order <laughs> that you got to observe. Watch this. Ephesians 5 and 22. Y'all listening to me? What does it say? Wives. Wait a minute. Who's it talking to? Wives. Wives. Now, when we talk about that, I, I'm, we're talking about heterosexual relationships. Yes. Because that's what God recognizes. Yes. Okay, look at the out in here. It said who? Wives. Wives what? Submit. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It didn't say love. We're going to take our time this morning. It said wives do what? Submit. Now, I looked up submit because I couldn't get past that word. I mean, I looked up submit. It says to give over or yield to the power or authority of another. Often used, watch this, reflexively, which means there's a command given and the wife is to give over to the authority of another. Yeah. Oh, it's quiet in here now. It's good. Now the wife said amen. So when the wives don't speak up, I'm expecting the men to give me one. It said wives submit. I think I'm in a Presbyterian church this morning. It said, wives, submit. Which means to give over a yield to the power. Watch this. To subject to some kind of treatment or influence. Watch this. To present for the approval, consideration, or decision of another or others. Wives, submit yourselves to who? No, no, I got a reader here. I got a reader. Submit yourself to who? Your own husband. Not somebody else's husband. Yeah. Not your office husband. Because we got all this crap going on right now. Yes, you got work husband. You got office husband. It said to your own husband. God said you got one. one. Right. Mm. Submit yourself to your own yeah. husband as what? Unto the Lord. Now, this is interesting because it, it intimates that you respect God. Amen. Come on, break this down. Did you hear that? See, because I'm sure you're not telling God you ain't going to do it. Yeah. It's, it, it, it says that you're giving your husband the same respect that you give unto God. Hallelujah. Submit yourself unto your own husband as unto the Lord. You talking back to God? You telling God, do it for yourself? You telling God you on your own? You telling God you're not going to do it? It said that the relationship that it, 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 it says that it thinks that you act right toward God. Maybe that's where we should start. And how you treat the Lord, you should be treating your, not another, your. Somebody say your own husband. Your own husband. And it says submit to him. Why? For the husband mm -hmm. is the head of the wife. The Bible said he's your head. I, I'm, I need an amen corner. Amen. See, y'all want to act like this throwback teaching. This relevant. Yes, sir. For the husband is the head of who? The wife. Watch this. Even as what? Christ is the head of the church. And what? And he is the savior of the body. Uh-huh, read. Therefore, as the church is subject Unto Christ. Just like the church is subject unto Christ, what? So let the wives uh -huh. be to their own Be to their husbands own husbands in what? In everything. In other words, there's no area that the church is allowed to disobey Christ. Amen. You preach it. There's no area that the church can tell Christ, I'm not doing it. Amen. And the Bible said that you're supposed to be submissive to your husband in few things. All things, everything. Somebody say every. Everything. 
everything. Now you single women need to conclude, do you want to get married? Because it said that you're supposed to submit to your husband in everything. Now, let's, let's, let's elevate the argument because I don't want you to pick a fool and then talk about not submitting. We, are, we want to have the safe assumption that you chose what you could follow yes. and you chose what you thought was a leader. Yes, sir. That's right. Come on and teach. We want to believe that you didn't just get something to satisfy something. And a lot of times that's why you're having a problem submitting because what you chose was a means to an end. Is this making any sense? Yeah. So now you don't want to obey because you chose what wasn't that bright. Right. Uh-huh. Come on, sir. Amen. But the Bible says there's an order. Yes. That you're supposed to submit to your husband as the church submits to who? Christ. Now watch this. I wrote this down. All there is to life is energy, vibration, and frequency. Energy. Vibration and frequency. That's all life is. Energy, vibration, frequency. You don't know this, but you're energy. Your body moves because energy is in your body. Okay? When you focus on something, that's a frequency. Okay? You know, when you, when you put your mind, when you set to something, somebody say, that's a frequency. That's a frequency. And there's a vibration. Nothing is still. It doesn't matter what you look. You're sitting in that chair. You think the chair is still, but the chair is moving because the chair is composed of energy. So all there exists in life is energy, frequency, and vibration. Now, when I really begin to understand that, I begin to understand, watch this, watch this. Submission is a frequency. It's an influence. It's given for a reason when you deal with a man. Because to be heard, you have to vibrate the frequency the energy of submission. Because a man is put in the position of authority. And truth be told, you know, it's optional if Elder Lewis wants to listen to me or not. Because we both men. Oh, it was quiet in here. But when you get with the right energy, even though you might hold the position of authority, the vibration of seduction, and influence will change the mindset of authority to adhere to the frequency of influence. You are teaching. Y'all walking with me? A lot of times you can't be heard because of your vibration. So we're going to get deeper into it. I'm going to segue. It says after that, husbands, what should husband do? Husbands? Uh Uh-huh. Love you. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I stopped that submit. I'm gonna stop at love. Yes, sir. Husbands, what? Love. Not respect. It didn't say husbands. I gotta get this because a lot of you women run around here talking about you don't respect me. Come on. See, you in the wrong frequency. It didn't say husbands respect. It said husbands do what? Love. Well, not, not, not love. Watch it. Let me, I looked up love. Love is a, a feeling of warm personal attachment or deep affection. Watch this. Sexual passion or desire. Y'all with me? Watch this. Profoundly, this love that a man's supposed to have for his wife is supposed to be profoundly tender. Oh, somebody ain't hearing me. What, to a thorough or very great extent or degree. In other words, men, you're supposed to love your wife. Somebody say deeply. 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 Love your wife. Watch this. Read. Husbands, love your wife uh-huh. even as Christ also loved the church. He said, now you're supposed to love your, li- your wife how? As Christ As Christ loved the church. Loved and what else? The church. Uh-huh. And gave Wait a minute. Himself. And gave himself. Somebody say died. Now, this is important because, see, you will never respect somebody enough to die for them. That is good. 
I can't respect you enough to give my life for you. I don't care how much I respect you to give my life. I got to love you. The Baptist church used to say it right. They said it was love that held him there. Yeah. You don't love enough. Love is the only emotion that will cause you to give up your life. Yeah. So he said, men, I want you to love your wife oh, deeply so that when she gets in trouble, you will go to the extent to save her, even to the extent of giving up your life. Yeah. Amen. Wonderful. Three, three. Wonderful. Is this the word? Yeah. Right. This is a profound tenderness. Hallelujah. Because when she gets that love, it moves her to listen. Hallelujah. Yeah. This, this masculine energy of love moves her to submit. Y'all with me? Because this masculine energy draws out of the woman this feminine energy of submission. <laughs> now, feminine energy, watch this. Submit is feminine energy. Y'all listen to me? Love is masculine energy. And the Bible said that he wants to love her that he might what? That he might sanctify. So that he might sanctify and what? Cleanse it. Uh-huh. With the washing of water by the word. Watch this. That he might cleanse his wife with the washing of water by the word. Why? Read. That he might present it to himself. Uh-huh. A glorious church. What type of church? A glorious church. Women, your husband trying to present to himself a glorious wife. Yeah. Come on and preach. He's trying to present to himself, watch this, a glorious wife, not having what? Not having spot. Not having spot. What or else? Or wrinkle. Or wrinkle. Or what or else? Or any such thing. Uh-huh. Read. But that it should be holy. Uh-huh. And without blemish. He said, men, when you love your wife, you make her to be faultless. This is good. This is important because he is here, watch this, to love the dysfunction out of you. That's what this washing of the word is. He's here. This is why to love the dysfunction. Your man met you to get the crazy out of you. That's what it said. Yes, sir. To the washing of the word. He's going to talk to her in a certain way, and he's going to love her in this profound, tender way that watch this, it causes her to woo. She begins to, to respect him. Because he's called to heal you. Oh, come on. Say that. It's love. So ought men to love their wives, what else? As their own body. Read. He that loveth his wife uh -huh. loveth himself. He said, when you love, you don't, if you don't love your wife, you don't love yourself. You can't say you don't, you don't like your wife and then, then make me believe you like you. Because she's an extension. Yeah. He that loved his wife, loved himself, read. For no man uh -huh. ever yet hated his own flesh. But what? But nourishes uh -huh. feeds himself, and read. Cherishes Takes care of himself, read. Even as the Lord, the church. Why? Read. For we are members of his body. Tell, tell, tell you, I belong to him. I belong to him. Why, well, you're members of his body, of his flesh, and of his what? And of his bones. For this cause, read. Shall a man uh -huh. leave his father uh -huh. and mother. And what? And shall be joined. Unto what? Unto his wife. His neighbor's wife. <laughs> his wife. You shouldn't have energy for somebody else's spouse. Amen. That you be joined unto your wife, and the two shall be what? One flesh. Now, I wrote something down. Because the energies, they attract one another. The energy of love and the energy of submission or respect, they attract one another to one another. In reality, you're not going to hear this anywhere else. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. In reality, it is impossible for masculine and feminine energy to fight. 
Oh, this is Michael. This is Michael. The book of Michael. <laughs> In reality, the energies flow together. Yes. Yes. When masculinity shows up, and it stays in its place, it can't attract nothing but a female. That's good. Ooh, it's quiet up in the church. These energies, listen to me, I wrote this down, they are created to connect, not fight. So when there is a disconnect, the same energy from both is in the room. Female energy will never emasculate a man. You run your man down, that's not a woman. Mm, it's quiet up in here. Paul said, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ in the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular love his what? Wife. Even as himself. And the wife what? See that, that she, she shows some respect. Her husband. That the husband loves his wife even as he loves himself, and the wife sees that she shows some respect. So I say this to you women if you're looking to get married, make sure you're not looking for a wife. I say this to you, brothers, if you're looking for to get married, make sure you're not looking for a husband. Preach. <laughs> Y'all with me this morning? Yes. Let's talk about love versus respect. Ding, ding, ding. Brown. <laughs> to a man, how does that look? I'm going to say some things to you. Talking to the men, women, you can eavesdrop on this. Here's what the Lord told me. I had a conversation. I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, I said you know, you know, <laughs> I'm ashamed to say it, but I said it. I said, uh, you know, I just want somebody to love me for me. That's all I'm looking for. Somebody that can see me. Love Michael. Michael, it took four hours and the Lord said something to me. He said, what did you say? <laughs> One, two, three, four, four, four hours later, the Lord said, you messed up. He said, you messed up. He said, the last woman to love you like that was your mama. That's oh, I'm going to take my time. Your mother love, it might be what you're looking for, it's gonna, but it's going to break you in your manhood. My God. Come on. My goodness. Because a mother loves, it holds on to you when you need a woman love that will let you go. Respect will let you go. Because respect can only be given where there's production. Yeah. So your mother loves you because of who you are. But the right woman loves you. She respects you because of how you handle. The Lord told me a man should never look for a woman to love him. And you're looking for a woman to love you is why you're in the position that you're in. I'm going to take my time. Y'all all right? Take your time. <laughs> Here's what he said. The first thing you got to get together, and this is what I had to realize. I'm the pastor of Changing Lives Ministries. No matter who I meet, no matter how I love them, they can never come before my vision. Amen. Because this is the vision. And if I meet somebody, they have to be clear that I will never love them like I love the vision. Oh, it's quiet up in the church. Because I've seen some men who love the woman over oh, the vision. C -c 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 Come here, Adam. Yes. Oh, wow. yes. He had an assignment that he was called to protect. Yes. But because of how he felt about his boo, 
Come on and preach. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me now. He gave up mankind because of his wife. Yes, he did. I got another one. Come, come, Samson. 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 Come here. Samson is another one. He was called to defend the nation of Israel, but he gave up vision for Delilah. So when you meet a woman, oh, come on, somebody. You got to let her know, baby, I'm going to love you. I'm going I'm, I'm to love you like none other. But watch this. But the vision takes care of us both. Yeah. I don't put you ahead of the vision. I don't put you ahead of what God has placed me here for. Yeah. So men, that's why you whining now because you're putting your woman before your dream. You're looking for, watch this man. This is what the Lord told me. He said, don't ever talk about you looking for a woman to love you. He said, you're looking for a woman to respect you. Because the truth of the matter is I can't interpret love without respect. That's right. That's right. And when you really begin to understand that, you stop whining. Look how the brother's looking at me. Watch this. Men, stop looking for your woman to validate you. You should have handled that insecurity before you met her. She can't make you feel like a man. Oh, my God, it's quiet in here. You know, there was a movie, uh, uh, House, uh, House of Cards. I've never watched it. I've never watched it. But, but somebody told me a story in it. I, I, I thought I'd share it today. So if you saw it and I miss say the story, get the point. Because I've never seen the movie. Y'all got it? But in the movie, the, 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 I guess it's Kevin Spacey. It's a show. It's a show. Okay. We're not going to deal with the details. <laughs> in the show, <laughs> Kevin Spacey, he's supposed to get promoted. And he doesn't get promoted. He gets overlooked. And when he gets overlooked, he comes home to his wife and he's heartbroken. And he talks to her. He said to her, he said, baby, he said, I'm sorry. He said, uh, I didn't get it. She said, what happened? You qualified for it. You've been training for it. What happened? He said, I don't know. They gave it to another. He said, I'm sorry. She said, you don't apologize to me. I'm your wife. She said, you ain't in the business of apologizing. You're in the business of fixing it. She said, I want to know how we going to fix this. Oh, y'all missed that. How we going to fix it? Because what I respect about you is how you handle your business. Come on. Right. You don't come home crying to me. You come home telling me how you're going to make this right. Yes, sir. That's what I married. Yeah. Oh, y'all missed that. Oh, y'all yes, missed that. See, when you come home and you don't gave up on the vision, exactly. it's just a matter of time before she gives up on you. Exactly. Because if it won't make you run, she sure can't run for it. Come on. So all this validation that you need, you, you, you got to know who you are before you get married. Pay me some attention, please. Touch me, hold me. This is not your mama, man. This is your wife. Oh, it's quiet up in here. You looking for some intimacy? You know, you oh, I want to lay. No, just shut up. Watch this approval. You don't need people's approval because every man, listen to me. You're going to come to a point in your life where you're going to have to make a decision that goes against the popular opinion. And if you're not secure in your manhood, you are people please rather than lead. Does it make any sense? You should not have to go outside of you to be liked. See, some of y'all missed that. You only like if others like you, but you don't like you. Your light should be in you for you. Watch this. Women don't look for respect. Look for what? Love. Love. How does that look? Number one, I wrote down is covering. Yes. Absolutely. When a man asks you women, this is not, not, not women, you, see, you all holler, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's mavy, I don't know how to be covered. 
Watch this. When a man asks you what you heard about, he's not asking you because he's being nosy. He asks you because he's a fixer. He's a healer. There is a bomb. In what? And Gilead. And he can't heal what you had. Why are you asking me about that? Because something wrong with you. Some of y'all didn't get that. You acting out. We need to get to what this root of this behavior is coming from. And you had a history that's relevant to your healing. Because love, when it meets you, wants to know where you came from. Oh, y'all quiet in here. You worried about your image. He worried about you. Yeah. I don't want to look a certain way to him, but he can't heal you. Because you look that way to somebody. Does it make sense? How are you covered? Number one, women. How does a man cover you? Provision. Preparation of things beforehand. This is a, as do, for the doing of something, meeting of your needs, the supply and means given to you. Most women think this is covering, but it's not. It's just making sure you got what you need. Look how quiet it's getting. <laughs> you love his hand most times, but you don't have his heart. Because you fell in love with provision. When you fall in love with provision, he can't love you. Because he's a means to an end. Oh, it's quiet in here. Watch this. Number two, a man brings, and I'm saying it to you women because men have been reduced to taking care of. And we weigh more than that. Provision, the second thing, second thing a man brings is protection. Preservation from injury. Preservation from harm. Watch this, from all that was chasing you before he met you. When Eve fell, Adam covered her. Didn't he do it? This was after the fall. He still cared about her being exposed. Am I right about it? He still wanted his woman covered, not exposed. Women, men want you covered, not exposed. That's why you can't keep secrets from them. I walk in the room with Sister Lynn. Stand up, Sister Lynn. And, you know, come on up here, Sister Lynn. I'm going to show you something. Stand up, Mr. Wayne. Come on over here. Now, I want to show you something. I walk in the room with Sister Lynn. Get your hands off her. Get your hands off her. <laughs> come on over here. See, this is what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Y'all get where I'm going, don't you? Yes, she with me. You hear me? Now, she used to like him. Used to. I said, she what? She used to like him. But she with who now? She with me. Now, she needs to tell me this history. It's quiet. Because if she don't, he'll walk up here with his hands on her. That's good. Yes. Come on, sir. When she tells me the history, they both got to act right. Because I will snap. And pop. When she cares about me, she doesn't hide him from me. Right. Yes, sir. Oh, y'all yes, looking at me like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Because she cares how I look before him. Yes. Yes, sir. Because he's the history. Right. I'm the present and the future. Yes, right. Oh, y'all understanding what I'm saying? Yes. She's not going to lose her present and her future over what's past. Yes. Are y'all getting what I'm saying? Yeah. But y'all in this business, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, watch this. I'm protecting you because I know how you are. No, you're protecting you. Yeah. Watch this, because of how you are. Wow. Oh, my God. Is this making any sense? So, watch this. He protects her. He gives provision. I make sure she has what she needs. And I protect her. To protect her, I have to know the danger. I have to know where the predators are. Yes. Come on. Oh, come on, church. Yes. 
Watch this. And, and next, don't go nowhere, care. Because you thought provision was care. Guys, make it plain. <laughs> you thought protection was care. Am I right about it? I was talking to a young lady, and I was, and I was, I was trying to explain to her about covering. And I said, you don't know what covering is. And she said, yes, I do. I said, tell me your experience with a man and covering. And she said, well, she said, my father covered me. I said, what did that look like? She said, well, he called and, you know, make sure that I, uh, if my car was going on, he'd be checking on my car. And if I had trouble with finance, he, he took care of that. You know, and there was nothing. I said, that's provision. Wow. And most women, that's where you miss our value. I said, care, let me tell you what care is. Care is, you know, not only did he put you in the house, but he makes sure the yard is right. Right. Amen. He makes sure, you know, that all things that are, watch this, it's, a, it's an attended to. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Oh, 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 y'all hear this? This is a detailed way of looking at things. Yeah. Huh? You know, understand that when he sees his woman and she has a need, he, he, he cares about this deep love, make sure that he facilitates this need. Watch this. Not just in provision, but in holding. Yes, Most of you brothers, you need to understand because you don't understand non-sexual attention. You can't rub past a minute without wanting to go further. You can go back. Anybody understand what I'm saying? She don't... She, I'm, 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 I'm trying to be careful how I say it. She, she don't need activity. Yes. She needs understanding. Yes, sir. And you keep getting them confused. Right. She just want to lay in your chest right. without you wanting to roll her over. <laughs> she wants, somebody said she wants care. She wants care. She wants to be able to talk to you and you really attentively listen. Not flipping channels. Is this making any sense? Somebody say you, she, he wants to care for you. Men are more than a check. We come to provide, somebody say, profound tenderness. <laughs> women sometimes make a mistake. I wrote this down, and I said it a little earlier, but I want to I want to relegate it to women. Women sometimes make the mistake that because they love you, they can disrespect you. They do. It's, it's, it's something happening, y'all. I, I, I care. Let me tell you, women, here's the, here's the, here's the revelation. Here's the flash. Women, I want y'all to hear this. If you don't hear nothing else I said, men will leave love. I don't care how deeply you love them. They will leave love because what they need is respect. And many a woman I've talked to, and because of how they felt about him, they couldn't understand how he could leave them. But it wasn't a culture of respect. God never told you to love him. He told you to do what? Quiet in here today. Is this making sense? There is no disrespect that can be viewed by a man through the eyes of love. I don't care how you say you feel about him. If you are disrespectful, he will not believe that you love him. And I don't care what's moving you. Making sense? God gave us these two different, watch this, wirings. So there wouldn't be a fight. I told a woman... I was talking to her, and uh, all at once, I went there. Y'all know what I'm talking about? It don't matter where I went. I went there. Now, we're talking, 
conversation going one way, and I went off. Didn't, didn't, wasn't planning it. Y'all walking with me now? I'm not a mean guy. Don't, don't misinterpret me, you know. Understand me. <laughs> and here's what I told her. I want you to hear this. I said, why you, why you do it? Why you go off like that? I said, let me tell you why. A man walked in the room. I was talking to you, and it was going well. But you started talking to me like I was six. Oh, it's quiet in here now. I, watch this. I, don't, I, I saw your body, but I felt masculine energy. Talking to, I, I talked to, talk to Mother Bennett about it, you know, I put my car in the shop, and I wanted to get my car, and I called David. And uh, David uh, didn't answer the phone. My armor bearer, he, he didn't answer it. Because you know, I want him to you know, come get me and go get my car. You understand what I'm saying? And so then, you know, uh, a, a, a female called that I know, and she don't live far from me. She in a relationship. I said, you know what? I said, I need a favor. I said, I need to get my car. I said, but I, I'm, I, I'm, I don't want to do anything that would send the wrong message. Did y'all hear what I said? Yeah. I said, if you, you right around the corner and the place is right around the corner. I said, if you don't mind dropping me off, I'm going to compensate you. Y'all get what I'm saying? I want to get my car and I didn't want to wait. I said, so, 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 so you all right with that? She said, what time do you need to be dropped off? I said, I need to make sure that it's okay first. <laughs> Because I don't want to offend you or him. Right, right. Oh, y'all understand what I'm saying? If, 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 I, if it had been a problem, I would ask what time. I said, a man just walked in the room. Here come that energy of disrespect. So you end up, you know, I called Frank. Frank called me after that, and Frank took me. Anybody get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You can't disrespect me and take me. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Which brings me to another point, gentlemen. You know why you're losing? Because you don't mean what you say. That's why you lost respect. Because, you know, and ladies, don't act like I'm lying right here. Because I'm going to say something. And y'all going to play me to the left. But women sometimes will do what they can get away with. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Ladies. Sometimes they act, watch this, as good as they have to. And they know, they know they just got to hold out for two weeks. My father said something to me, and he said to me, he said, Michael, he said, let me tell you something about women. He said, women don't want a good man. Now, this came from, from my daddy, and I fought my daddy on it. Y'all hear me? I said, I can't be true. Who wouldn't want a good man? But the Lord broke down to me what it actually means. I'm going to talk to the simps in the audience. The simp is a modern day term for a man who will put the needs of a woman before his own. <laughs> Here's what the Lord told me. Are y'all listening to me? Yes, sir. We think being a good man is giving you chance after chance after chance and watches and rewarding bad behavior with good treatment. You know why? Because in relationships, we forgot the difference between, watch this, watch this, what's a right? Y'all listening to me? And what somebody gives to you that's not a right. Y'all walking with me? We've lost that everything you're not just supposed to have. It's getting quiet in here, more and more quiet. 
I'm looking for a term that I, 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 I question that, I put it as, because I want to say it exactly how he gave it to me. Y'all going to give me a minute? I was talking to Allison yesterday. You remember what I said, Allison? What did I say? You didn't expect it? Oh, my God. <laughs> that was a safe answer. <laughs> that was Let me use this word. Let's, let's, let's use the word uh, a benefit. Let's use that. We don't know the difference between what's a benefit and what's a right. Let me use another word. We don't know the difference between what's a privilege and what's a right. When you don't know the difference, you think somebody owes you something regardless of how you act. Yes, come on. See, rights are yours, but privileges can be taken. Yes, yes, that's good. And what happens with men when they think they're good men, they keep, they, because they want to take care of you, they take care of you past their good treatment. Yeah. They take care of you to the point that you can treat them any kind of way and they still going to be there for you. Yeah. And you can count on them to show up no matter how bad you act. Don't get quiet, church. Is this the truth? And so we've been taught that those are good men, but they dumb men. And men don't know the difference between being a good man and being a dumb one. Because when you're a good man, you hold people accountable. When you're a dumb one, you let people get away with it and you still show up for them. Is this making any sense? So I got to know the difference between, somebody say relational energy. Relational. Submission is a what energy? It's feminine. It's feminine. Love is a what energy? Feminine. It's masculine. I'm going to close with this, this verse here. Proverbs, we learned this as children, Proverbs 15 and 1. Watch this. It said a soft answer. Run Don't run away with it. It said a soft answer does what? That's the way right. In other words, when anger shows up, when it's confronted with feminine energy, it turns it away. It said a soft answer turns away wrath, but watch this. But grievous words stir up anger. Do what? Stir up anger. In other words, listen to me. <clears throat> when anger shows up, if it's met with feminine energy, anger must subside. Because the energies are designed to get along. Is this making any sense? When you respond right to your man, he backs down. When your man gets all up on you, I'm not talking about no, no physical way. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Verbally, you know, he's, he's, he's combative. The reason is because you gave grievous words. You met here with masculine energy. One king, one queen per castle. Did y'all get that? Listen to me. Unless I'm soft, you can't be hard. Ooh, I wish I had a church that was walking with me this morning. If I'm soft, come on in here, she male. Come on in here with that masculine energy. Tell a brother what to do. But if I'm a man, you can't walk in here any kind of way and talk to me any kind of way. You got to show some. All three of y'all. Anybody understand what I'm saying? If you are a woman, you don't need no sissy ruling you. I'm talking about soft man. The Bible says in the Revel uh, not Revelation, the Bible says in Romans, the first chapter, it talks about effeminate. Yes. That's soft. Some of you women, you're really <coughs> upset because what you're choosing is not a man in energy. And you're frustrated because it has no direction, he has no vision. And you can tell them what to do, and you really hate it. But watch this. If you don't want to trade in your 
Masculine energy. You don't have to get you a wife. Y'all be talking, y'all be talking about energy, right? And what do I mean by wife? You're going to have to get you a man you can boss. Some women can't get along with men they can't boss. Which leads me to my last point. My last point. I was studying, you know, because, you know, these relationships stuff, it's, it's, it's crazy out in the streets now. <laughs> Y'all know that, right? And I was studying, you know, narcissism and, you know, codependent personality types and empaths. And, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to deep dive into it. You know what I mean? I'm, I mean, I done wrote the 20 things down on narcissists and, you know, all of these different things. I'm like, man, do these people, this dysfunction, this dysfunctional people. And the Lord said to me, when a man is in his place, He'll never have to deal with a narcissistic woman. Watch this. When you walk in masculine energy, what don't respect can't come. So here's my closing summation. <laughs> Anybody ever been to the club? Not the old saints. Not the old saints. Not the old saints. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Watch this. If you go to a club, I'm closing. They got what you call a cover charge. Y'all know what a cover charge is? <clears throat> cover charge is you can't just get in. You got to pay the $10 door fee to get in the club. Does that make sense? Now, when you get to the, when you get to the club and you got to get in those, sometimes if it's a popular spot, you got long lines. If it's popular. Now, you got a guy at the door. He's the bouncer. This bouncer doesn't care who you are. All he wants to know, do you have $10? Are, are y'all walking with me? You walk up to the door, and you say, he say, he say, he say, he say $10. And you say, well, I ain't got it. He said, well, get out the line. We ain't going to argue. Y'all hearing me? It costs what? It costs $10 to get in. That's it. It costs, what does it cost? It costs $10 to get in. So he ain't going to argue with you. If you got $10, you can what? If you don't have $10, what? Get out the line. This is how we are in relationships. You're supposed to have a cover charge. You're supposed to have an expectation standard. When people want to get in your space, this is what it costs. It calls, it calls respect and cooperation. If you ain't got that, we ain't arguing with you. Get out the line. Are you all making any sense? And some of you all, you mad because you won't call charge cover to let them in. Because you ain't got a standard. Men, when you operate in your position as a man, somebody says a man. When you operate as a man, masculine energy won't attach itself to you. She won't be able to be narcissistic because you don't put up with that. Oh, look how y'all looking at me. She won't be able to act all sideways and out of pocket because you won't put up with that. You get a couple of times at the most and you out of my life because there's a charge to be in my space. And the reason women are not being healed is men most times are not standing in their position. Did y'all hear me, brothers? You letting her get away with that. You chasing love, not respect. And that's why your relationships are not working. And that's why your women are talking to you any kind of way. And that's why you begging for counseling because you won't be the man you need to be to stop that. Y'all hearing me? Privilege, not right. What does that mean? You clowning? We got to take some stuff away. See, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I didn't say stop paying the bills, did I? But watch this, watch this, watch this. I ain't going to say that. <laughs> I'm going to put it to you like this. I'm going to tell you the story my mama told me. And this might help you, and I'm closing. My mama, when my dad would... When she wanted something and he wouldn't give it to her, she'd cry. 
<laughs> and one day, this is what she told me. One day, he, she started crying. He said, it ain't working today. You know why? I refuse to be manipulated any longer. I said, no. That's what I meant. You can cry. You can slide all across the floor and worm. It's no. When she can break your word, she's already broken you. Mean what you say, and you have her respect. Don't threaten her with things you know you don't want to do. Don't say nothing you don't want to do. You don't want to get a divorce, don't holler, I'm going to divorce you. Amen. It's quiet in here. Don't get so upset that you hurt yourself trying to change somebody. Come on, that's good. If you want to act like you want to. But set the line. Watch this. Because these are privileges, baby. What did I say? These are not rights. I teach you to treat me right when I teach you right, and I expect that in return. And if you don't reciprocate, we're going to have to have another negotiation. Amen? You want to hear one more story? This is the worst counseling I've ever given. But I believe in it. I told, I told a married friend of mine, he was having some issues. And, uh, you know, the Bible talks about when you get married, you know, what belongs, what your body ain't yours and his ain't his and all that. That's Bible. Y'all know that, right? And he was in one of those, I ain't going to do it, marriages. Y'all understand what I'm saying? You know, and the Bible talks about now you got to be careful with that because, you know, people start looking outside. When you ain't satisfying them. I said, well, you know, you can't do that. But, you know, you do understand the difference between privileges and rights. Y'all hear me? Yeah. I, said, I said, if I were you, I ain't saying this is advice. I'm just telling you what I told them. I said, you need to sit down at the table and say, the bills totaled 1800 this month. And your portion... It's nine. Right. I said, when you go out to eat tonight, bring Longhorn home only for you. Eat that big cowboy steak. Oh, it's quiet up in here. I know Sister Ann. I'm just, this is what I said to him. You know, eat that, and that, that big Pepsi. And she said, did you get me son? No. I ain't get me none. Yes, sir. Come on. Right. These are rights and privileges, rather. These are not rights. Um, you, you, you're never going to be on your own, but you're going to have to pay your part now because you don't want to obey the word. I probably shouldn't have told that story. Uh, uh. You cannot, listen to me. I ain't trying to lose control of the, of the natives. You cannot, listen to me, until you understand that, watch this, you have to reciprocate relationship. You will be abused if there is no outcome for negative behavior. I didn't say mistreat her. I said hold her accountable. And you know why it's so hard to eat? Because most women are not held accountable. If you got a trifling man, I ain't got nothing to say for trifling men. I, I don't even speak to them. They make me vomit. But as a woman, if you got a good man, get yourself together. Amen? We're going to end it. Give the Lord a hand praise. Amen. 
Hey, thank you guys so much for joining our live feed and broadcast. We do appreciate your time, but we are eager and excited that you're joining our community, our faithful community of followers and believers, people who are life changers, who are world changers. And so what we're going to ask you to do is if you have a desire to give because this message is feeding you and providing everything that you need to help you get to that next level, to present your best self, then what we're going to ask you to do is partner with us. No gift is too big or too small in the kingdom of God that is going to be utilized to reach the untaught, the unchurched, and the uncommitted. So we thank you so much for what you're doing, what you've done, and what you will continue to do as a life changer. Thank you so much. Remember, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. God bless you.